Politburo uh, assembled last night. The people trying to get together. Oh, with together. the gang. Yeah. yeah, the gang. They were all, hail, hail, the gang's all here. And you good gotta people. Have, you got to have meetings, you know, or else yeah. you can't have any action. Yeah, I think it's really good that we're putting it together this year because the, the absurdities are manifest. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I don't know why people aren't just filing out into the streets, I you know. know, I um, know. Let me introduce you, okay? Go ahead. And welcome, gang. Welcome to Conversations. Tom Foti, he's a 9 11 truth person. Yes. He's also a political activist. He's also a, a fantastic musician, and he's involved in that. And he's got a very interesting story to tell. We're going to be talking, as I understand it, particularly about his uh, upset with uh, the way in which financing and the basic premises by which the economy is organized. Uh, on, on this particular program, on this week, we're going to be putting on a number of programs about economics and so forth. But Tom, welcome very much. It's good to see you. At Thank a meeting you, Rob. Good to be back Saint here. St. Mark's Church again last That's night. That's right. That was fun. That yeah. was fun. Yeah. Talk a little bit about yourself briefly, okay? And then let's get into some of the sub substance, particularly of this uh, critique you have. And I can uh, understand. We could talk about the issues okay. of the basic philosophy or the of the econ of the of economics that I think informs the political process. What's well, Planetarily and nationally and so forth. I mean, I think but everything starts with money. Okay, okay. Um, well, um, yeah, I grew up in New Jersey and I went to Seton Hall University. Uh, and I've been living in New York City about three years now. Uh, my other field was real estate. So um, thanks for setting me up that client uh, My pleasure, my pleasure. You know, yeah, we're yeah, going to get yeah. him a nice apartment. Do you, do you do well by him now, right? Oh, yes. I'll take, yeah. I'll take care of him. I already talked to my boss. Uh -huh. So, uh, but I've been involved in political activism here in New York City for the past, uh, I would say, two years. And before that, I was involved in uh, New Jersey peace action, mm -hmm. um, you know, protesting the wars and such. Yeah. And uh, it's actually through working for 9-11 Truth that I've come upon a lot of the information that, you know, that I've been sharing on our last show and mm -hmm. then that I do w my presentations down at St. Mark's yeah, okay, for our yeah. activists down there. What did you study at the university? Well, uh, I studied uh, communications. Okay. And uh, so I really wasn't in, uh, I was always interested in finance, but I was a little lazy to, uh -huh. to take that route. Uh, mm -hmm. But I did want to be a journalist and I wanted to be a writer. I did, I'm an un unpublished novelist, which we never talked about. Communication, but did you ever get anything? You didn't get it published. You got something written that's on this file and everything? Uh, yeah, on the I novel or short story? I have a novel that has uh, 50 rejections. Uh, 25 from publishers. Only 50? And 20, yeah, only oh, 50. Nothing, so you know, you get pink slip row. Huh? Get the steam back. But I, I've been, uh, published uh, in, in our publications and uh, I've done some things that have been published online. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But uh, anyway, so I get, like I was saying, it, it wasn't until I got involved in 9-11 Truth mm -hmm. because of all the things that happened down on September 11th yeah. and you, you keep digging deeper and deeper mm. into that, you know, I mean, you first you say, well, geez, it couldn't have happened that way because uh -huh. the towers came down too fast and where were yeah. our air defenses and right. all this other stuff. And then um, you say to yourself, well, geez, it was Dick Cheney and George Bush. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, geez, you know, George Bush I don't think could be a mastermind of something like that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And even with Dick Cheney, I think that uh, there are people above him kind of pulling the sp strings. People, the Illuminati, or the people that uh, are really running the show. A lot of people, people think the people the in the back room you never see who really run it and set the template. Right, the power behind the throne. The power behind the throne concept, that kind of thing. I wonder if uh, there's, a, and what you do come upon, as was evident at the meeting last night, is that there's all kinds of inconsistencies in practically every field you can think of. There's a problem, civil rights now, and all this kind of thing. Um, do you think if there had not been 9-11, Let's just suppose it hadn't happened. Right. Things were going along. Would there, there the inconsistency in the systemic problems in terms of the way spaceship Earth, one of a better term, is being operated, mm -hmm. and the inequities and the inappropriateness right. and the out of touch with the requirements of the zeitgeist and everything, would have still been operative. But the 9/11 event and then the 9/11 Truth movement that found criticism of the official report and that kind of stuff brought a lot of systemic problems into the fore. One of which is the financing that you've come upon. Do you, do you understand Absolutely what I'm right. saying? Absolutely you think it right. wouldn't have happened you, if it hadn't know, been for 9-11? It, it's, it's funny. I mean, if, if the people who sacrificed, I can't say they sacrificed their lives, but the poor souls who were fallen that day, yeah, yeah. if there's any silver lining they come out of that, mm -hmm. maybe it's through their deaths, you know, uh, they're, they're kind of like appealing to us. Please learn a little mm -hmm. bit more about the whole thing. About you know, the whole thing. About, yeah. about the whole system. Why, why did we die? Mm -hmm. You know? And when you look into it, y you find things out about what we'll be talking about later on with the mm. Federal Reserve Bank. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I never knew it wasn't a, 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 an official government. And if it hadn't been for that, you probably wouldn't have been uh, wouldn't hip have. to it. And you know, it's funny. Th uh, this is probably th too early in the show to say this, but I, uh, you know, I feel that there's a, just an oligarchy, um, and it's uh, based, based in the banking system. 
and do who uh, their big plan is to is globalization, and they want to control the world mm -hmm. through globalization. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I, I feel that, geez, you know, they would have had it, hands down, without any kind of uh, competition or uh, uh, any, any kind of conflict from us. Monkey wrench in the right. works, yeah. But they, they decided to go for too much, you know, too soon well with 9-11. Yeah, you're showing a few things there that portray uh, or uh, in illustrate the fact that you have a sense of 9-11 truth, that there were people at the highest levels of our government involved in a conscious plot conspiratorially to do that in order to get a certain kind of political advantage to advance a cause. I believe that the, the real planners were higher than our government. I think it's international uh, cabal of fi financiers. Mm -hmm. and it's, financiers. Uh, financiers, you mm -hmm. know, uh, who uh, own, uh, from what I understand, mo all the central banks uh -huh. you know, in the world. And their, their uh, headquarters is based in the Bank of International Settlements in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. It's been called the Central Bank of, of Central Banks, mm -hmm. you know. And when you have, when you control, was it Meyer Amshar Ross, Ross Child, yeah. you know, I care not who runs the country as long as I run the finance, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, basically, that's what they're doing. If you control how uh, a nation uh, gets its money, mm -hmm. you know, you control a nation. Or if you control or have control, uh, philosoph uh, your, your theory is accepted uh, in terms of economics. I said earlier at the beginning, economics in a certain sense informs the political and the business prospect and the organization of the society to a very large degree, don't you You think? use a peculiar word, and that is informs, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and one of the things that we don't quite see eye to eye on, yeah, okay, um, right. but the media, I think, is completely controlled, and I think that's why it's, it's wonderful that you are doing a show like this, where somebody like me or some of the other fine guests you have on. Well, I would uh, suggest you, with a communications degree, might start thinking about doing some programming over here, young man, if I may thinking suggest. Thinking about it? Yeah, yeah, you planted a seed. You planted a seed, Harold. Yeah, yeah. Get but some good uh, people. We're getting good faculty here now. This is getting. To this is where right? the really important ideas, the really significant ideas, systemic ideas, are going to appear first. Not in the networks, and it's going to have to be multimedia. Of course, of course. So you did communications. You yeah. understand all that. So you should get thyself here. Okay. I mean, uh, we'll talk about it. It's very possible. We're going to try and recruit you to the faculty. Activism for 9/11 Truth mm. is so demanding on I hours know. and things I like that because yeah. if you know. One of, uh, uh, as an organizer, you know, I mean, people kind of rely on you to, to, to tell them, you know, where to what's be. Happening, and, you know, yeah, what's happening, yeah, you know. Yeah. But anyway, as far as and the And then media, there's all this pesky business of earning a living. Got to do Isn't that. Isn't that a drag? Got to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, okay. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. Yeah. As far as so the media inform. goes. So inform. Inform. I don't uh. think the public is, has been informed. In fact, I think they've been, the, the term has been dumbed down. It's mm. been used. Mm. Uh, the public has been conditioned to uh, not be inquisitive you know, and to not know what's going on. Mm -hmm. John Stewart, I'm sure you're, you've heard of. Wouldn't miss him. Okay, all right. Uh, and Colbert. Now, I didn't see the show. Colbert's uh, doing a fantastic job also. I didn't see the show, but from what I heard, uh. like two weeks ago, they showed Time magazines from all different countries in Europe. Uh -huh. And of course, the cover was about the Iraq war and uh -huh. so on, and uh -huh. you know, and all the things to do with that. But the American Time magazine, I believe, that you could check yourself. I believe it was an actress on the cover. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, could I mean, be. it's purposely uh -huh. uh, misleading to our, uh, to our public about, well, about what priorities are. One, uh -huh. one more thing. Yeah. You know when you go on your website yeah. and I have MSN? Yeah. MSN, the news, used to be boom, boom, right on top. You know, the news as far as news flashes, what the headlines are, mm -hmm. okay, when you go on your homepage? Yeah. They moved it to here. Yeah, you know, what did they put in the place? Gossip. Yeah, there's gossip, there's what ha Paris Hilton's doing, what's Brad Pitt doing. Well, that's probably following the market. They probably have a way of measuring hits, and so they follow the market. You know who gets right, more hits than anybody else on the whole internet, I think, is Ugly George. Ugly George. And Ugly George, the guy who brought, uh, you know, uh, uh, he used to go and get ladies going, or in a, he, he's, he's, he, he, to go in a cry. With a camera on the street, you'd go, uh, would you go in this uh, 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 darkened hallway and take off your clothes? He says that to people? Yeah, he would do it with ladies. And then the, uh, 99 would hit him upside the head, and then one would do it, and then he put that <laughs> on the air. And he gave him what is usually termed tits and ass, and that's what the people really wanted instead of all the intelligent talk that the promise of, course, of the cat, you know, so, but, you know, so it's the people's taste for that kind of thing and the people in the market would say that's the market so let's put that at the top and that's a capitalist priority because then they get more advertisers to watch the program, uh, that want the people to watch the program. You understand? I do understand, okay. but I think it's more than that. It's not dumbing down, it's a, it's a business you know, decision based upon democracy. As a subscriber of Time and Newsweek yeah. uh, for years, 
uh -huh. okay, uh, when the uh, when the uh, war started with Iraq, mm -hmm. I was now we're on the internet now. We can get publications from overseas. Isn't it great? It's great. It's fantastic. You see MediaChannel.org, Danny Schechter station. Oh, he's got them all. Mm -hmm. Really good, man. That's really good. Not only for his documentary right, work. I've seen he does. him on your show. He's fact. really good, and right. he's really good, and he's got all the newspaper. You want something to know what's going on in Kazakhstan? And now Google's got a thing. They'll translate it from Kazakhstan language or whatever it is to English. You want to hear what they think in Kazakhstan? You can. It's really oh, good. That right? Yeah. That's interesting. Mediachannel.org. Everyone should get behind Danny Schechter. He's a great good guy. Yeah, but, but, but through the web, you can get stories that are yeah. happening overseas. Yeah. And you realize, well, geez, I just, let's talk about the weapons of mass destruction, yeah. for instance. Yeah. Okay? I knew that there was no weapons of mass destruction because you I was didn't. reading things from overseas, mm -hmm. saying the International Atomic Agency mm -hmm. knew that, Hans Blix knew that, all these other people knew that, mm -hmm. you know, and there were stories going out about how it was researched, you know. So, uh, but our, it wasn't challenged in the press here. Scott Ritter, yeah. Right, Scott mm -hmm. Ritter was saying the yeah. same thing, mm -hmm. you know, and oh, so Time and Newsweek, okay. Mm -hmm. So we were having these war protests, and maybe you, I'm back, back, back way back when, I'm sure, you know, Woodstock guy like yourself. Oh, yeah, I can remember when way back when, unfortunately. And yeah. I'm old enough to remember uh -huh. watching that as a little kid on TV, yeah, right, uh -huh. and you see all the war protests yeah. back in the 60s. It was massive then, yeah. Well, guess what? We had massive war protests going on in New York City and in D.C., and they didn't get the coverage. You mean uh, recently? You mean Well, 2003, recent? whatever, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't get the coverage. Had a hell of a lot of people out on February 15th. Oh, you remember year. that? Do I remember? We were all, wasn't it, it was fantastic. Yeah, I it was all over the world, and people jumped all up all over the internet. Yeah. That, you know, to me. And remember, Tom Fulte, yes. that the New York Times famously came out and said there are two great superpowers in the world, the hyperpower USA and world public opinion, and world public opinion is turning in a very serious way in wide dimensions. You just got a guy down in Guatemala. Ortega's back in Gu Nicaragua. They got a guy in Ecuador that got elected left wing. You got the Chavez. There's a lot of the world's masses of the people are taking great exception to the basic premises by which this planet operates with the United States being seen as the Rome on the Potomac. Good, good. And that should be the headline instead of Paris Hilton. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I canceled my, my subscriptions to Time and Newsweek because they were not reporting any, anything for about, about so the So what do you movement. subscribe to in order to get good information, keep yourself alert? Read the New York Times a lot. I, I wish I could say I read it every day because, you know, sometimes you get caught up with all the things you're doing. Um, and um, on the web. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, my and the web is, though, is a great thing. We didn't is. have you that. You got to sift that. You, you got to sift out what's good and what's not. When you were young, when I right. Was well, young, if, if there's a saving grace, you yeah. know, God yeah. shuts the door, he opens the window. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. the window. Yeah, you said you know? earlier on about how there's an oligarchy, so that's some sort of a. Let me suggest, right? Okay. That it's not a cons. There, it's not a conspiracy. I mean, there are conspiratorial aspects to it, but if you got a world that's all tuned into dumbing down and 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 sex and gossip and that kind of thing that's the way they operated you got some people who have an understanding of things in a way and it's always been hasn't it if you think back through all of history it's always been a few dudes ran everything emperor right, we, we had the same Rome. conversation last time did we well i mean it's, we did. it's always the divine been. right of kings you were saying well that did in the in the feudal period for all that time and that's the way people got an identity the guy who was able to hit the other guy on the head and take over and he was in charge and so you got a small leadership class right. of people always and it's drifted from being the emperors of rome to the feudal uh, dynastic states of europe mm -hmm. for 900 years Industrial Revolution came along, and now it's in the hands of the bankers and the financiers who represent right. the leadership right. uh, of the society politically and economically. And it's nothing new about that. It's not a conspiracy. Oh, it's just a power it's relationship. Okay, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if you're a football fan. Uh, the, uh, the Eagles beat the Giants Did a couple they? times that recently. Good? That's horrible. I'm a big oh, Giant fan. Okay. But um, Danny, uh, not Danny, uh, Jeff Garcia, quarterback mm -hmm. of the Eagles, was questioned about his past with these uh, two other teams, mm -hmm. we didn't do anything, and they were no good. Yeah. Okay, and he said the past is history, tomorrow's a mystery, today's a gift. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. That's what he said. Yeah. So what I want to do and is who make is the he? most. Who is Jeff he? Garcia is a football player. He's a football player. He's a quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, and like they're, still, they're still in it. Muhammad Ali came up with some good poetry. He did. My Athlete. point is, if today yeah. is a gift, yeah. then I want to use that gift. I want to make the most of that gift of today right. to right. make the most of potential, which I think is unlimited as a human being. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah. And to, as 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 Lincoln said, as God gives us to see the right, to mm. see what I think is right, and to implement that mm -hmm. from, from my as fellow brothers, said? Abraham Lincoln. Oh, Lincoln. Okay, you want you talk to do something to do what's right as God gives us to, uh, to see what's right. Do you think there's opportunities in this time? Let's say let's say we take that basic assumption that throughout all of, all of humanity there's been a, a, a certain kind of leaders who had power and so forth. Yeah. And most leaders is a, is a strange term to use, but go ahead. Well, it is. Tolstoy said the only thing to really question is what is this thing called power? They have power and they can control other people, and but well, either through charismatic leadership or through... I can give you my theory on it whenever you get a chance. But it's always been like that, and the people 
people, the masses, 80% of the world who were still not being served, were wallowing around in the mud and following wherever it was for, for you know, uh, in, 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 in fear of the authority figures and so forth. That okay. It's, been right. like, it's always right, fine, been fine, like fine, that fine, through fine, history. Fine. That's history. History is right. a nightmare. Let's, now, let's talk about evolution just a little bit. All right, that's what I'm trying to. I'm saying, okay. now we get to a point, you think we're getting to a point where that basic scenario where you've got a few people running everything, everybody else is an answer to them. We now we're an answer to the banks and the finance guys because they're running the show and everything. They got all the power and all the influence and they can buy the politicians. All. And they buy Do the you new think newspapers we're at a time and buy where there's something new? in terms of the evolution of the evolution of consciousness or the evolution of the zeitgeist that's presenting opportunity to where that pattern which is the historical pattern mm -hmm. is somehow going to be transformed now in this particular time and what is it about this particular time that makes this different than all other time as well, we look I back think, through history I think you have to think that there's going to be something new yeah you know I mean mm -hmm. why limit your own thoughts mm -hmm. for, okay. for crying out loud you mm -hmm. know I mean the yours uh, but as far as evolution goes, I mean, you know, what I think about this whole power thing, you had the question of Tolstoy yeah. saying, what is power? Yeah, he says I it's a it central question to be addressed. Well, I'll give you an answer for you, Tolstoy. Mm. I know you're not around anymore. Mm. I think it's unchecked id. Oh. You, know, you think id. it is? I okay. think, I mm -hmm. think id is uh, the driving force, you know, the, like the little baby, I want this, I want that. Okay, yeah. it's, and it's their total world. They have to have it, mm -hmm. you know. But I think as uh, an individual develops, mm -hmm. you know, and evolves, you know, it comes into other... Uh, Social people, organizations. Yeah, social organizations yeah, and right. people telling them, you know, you know, not telling him, but, you know, basically he, st he refines himself as uh -huh. he goes along or she goes along in their lives, you know, to not maybe say, I want this all the time. Maybe say it's a better idea to uh, give this to this person here and there and take this here and have a little balance. Uh -huh. Okay. So I think that uh, as far as these guys who are the powerful, and I think that w I'll talk to you about it later. I think the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and some of the big ba banking families, you uh -huh. know, are the ones who are really pulling the strings. And I think because they have the power. I think them and a few, and a few others in their yeah. realm yeah. Uh, has, has been, th for years and years, have never had anybody tell them, no, you shouldn't. You know what I mean? So it's like their id is just like, I want, I want, I want. And, and their cruelty, when I say cruelty, I, I don't, you know, don't want to indict even the people I think I are think bad. it's right not to think about you indicting. I mean? It's we're all caught up in this. If we're talking about a transformation, everybody's caught up in that system. Right, you're and right. And we have right, systems right. that we've inherited. Mm -hmm. And if you're younger, you should not try to say, why didn't the older people do things right. the way we're at now? I'm with you. Because there's things we can do now, and we should be a little bit ca uh, cautious with that. And we should try to get a system that is going to be able to inform and, and I must the tell entire you. system in a way that nobody has to lose. So that we, the only enemy is ignorance right. of how how do we get it right and where did we go wrong or how did things change that make things available to us now that were not available out of the history in the historical the focal context? point and I hope you don't mind getting getting corny like in the old sick get corny okay the focal point is love uh-huh okay that's got to be the uh, is what we what we measure things by okay we've got to measure things by you know how much we can care about others all right and, yeah. about, our, and about ourselves I, I mean, think it's not you're just, right you know other than self right yeah. And, um, and I think as we kind of refine this, this concept of love, of loving ourselves, number one, because uh -huh. you don't want to just love everybody else and then you let yourself get, you know. Maslow. Right, that. you don't want to yeah. do that, right? Uh -huh. But um, this is, this is this what's going to bring us this great age in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is, not a, this is not a new thing. I mean, it's not new. Jesus said it, Jesus, Buddha said it, practically all, all of our spiritual but leaders, and you notice it's been roundly ignored by our political leaders who of take course, over. Of course, of course. All right, so uh, what I'm saying is that, uh, that what, this, what these guys have, the guys in power, yeah. it represents the instinct of power within all of us. So it's okay. almost like, I hate to say this, I'm on tape saying this, you can I say almost uh, can applaud somebody for just about taking over the world. Uh -huh. Because that's a hell of a goal to, to yeah. finally reach. Yeah. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Uh -huh. um, but hey, you know, take that, that engine you have running, well, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to want to power and have power everybody at, over else, you know, and, and contain it a little bit okay. and use that engine to do things for people instead of to people. That's an interesting concept, the idea of that, because, you know, in a certain sense, there's different forces in the universe. 600 million years ago mm -hmm. on this planet, there was no, all right, they had a thing on television, they have great stuff on television now. And just think about how much great stuff has been done is going to be available educationally when we get past all the anyway they had the and it was 600 million years ago all uh fauna was m unicellular uh spongiform right very simple and then the evolution happened it grew from there right so that was a singularity it mm -hmm. happened so we go so it's involving and 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 through that long haul we've been involving up and one of the things is that there is an impact, and you could look at it. You could look at, say, steady state, 
You could say we have a steady, and there could have been em, em, there could have been influences in that primordial ooze that said, "This is cool, this is nice, you know. Th th let's just get along, uh, le you know." Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, but but there was an impetus to move. Right now, that power that would be impetus to power. Some would right. say, but it's impetus. You could call it male. You could call it maybe Western. James right. Joyce said, "The mm -hmm. West shall shake the East awake, while you have the night for the morn." That the technology like and the that. extension, like extension that. of it. And some people would say, "Give peace a chance," and that kind mm -hmm. of, but there's impetus to change. Right. And so that impetus to change mm -hmm. could be linked, maybe, because power could be seen in the work of Michelangelo. He yeah, made the Pietà. Yes. Why do you perfect, have to make the perfect, David? Perfect you see? example. So perfect it doesn't example. have to be power. It has to be no. a thing to be exerted over other people. Right. But it gets co-opted right. by people in terms of the political. And always it was done within a context you in know, terms of our thinking throughout history, where there wasn't enough to go around. So who who is going to get charge of the grain in order to distribute it and get power over people and, and require people to do what those people who have the power? think those Harold, people should do rather Harold, than what Harold, they might want to do. Do you want me, for the first time ever, to me tell you about my piano theory? Yes, please. Okay. All right. I think when people are born, mm -hmm. they get a piano. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And there's nothing morally wrong or right with what they do with the piano. Mm -hmm. They can take a sledgehammer and they can break the piano apart. If they own it, right? If they own it, it's theirs. Oh. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, or they can lay in it and go to sleep on it, you know, or they could use it to lean on and put their drinks on, you know, and nothing's wrong or right with that. Uh. But. If you start noodling around with the keys a little bit, uh -huh. and you can say, hmm, there's a harmony. Uh -huh. And say, hmm, there's a melody. And what yeah. happens when I put these three uh, notes down here and these four down here? Yeah. Ah, that sounds great. And all of a sudden, you're, you're playing a symphony. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Did you, uh, I, I like that okay. a lot. And could I tr tr chirp in a little thing? Yeah, they had a thing on it. Ovation and Channel. That's a thing, Ovation mm -hmm. on the networks. Right. I think it's called Ovation. It's the arts. Mm -hmm. And they had a thing on there. It was just great, a program about the piano, the history. Right. I think it's about 300 years, 300 years that the piano was developed, major thing in terms of Western music and so forth. And they had a thing in there where they had, the, and they had multimedia with a Ferrari going around, and they said Beethoven, right. great composer, there's design. There's design in terms of this technology that existed, and the technology's evolving, and there's so much you could do with the technology that existed uh -huh. of the piano at his time. Right. And if you played it at his time, right. certain things were heard. And now, as the piano got more and more able to pick up on the intrinsic uh, qualities of the design, which was his composition, they had pianos that were advanced in 100 years from there or something, and all kinds of nuanced, absolutely gorgeous aspects of that music that could not be heard. The technology was not able to realize Is that right? It could I wasn't, be heard. No, I wasn't yeah. aware. So, they so made so the so point. So that his better design, now than it used to be? Yeah, wow. because of the technology right. and the ability of the right. piano to realize right. what the design had inherent in it. There <laughs> may be a lesson in terms of evolution in there in terms of design. We need to have a concept of design. Great analogy. My, yeah. my point with this is, you know, as far as power goes, yeah. you have the power to do whatever you want with that piano. Uh -huh. And you could do something, you can destruct it if you like, because mm -hmm. that power is inside of us, you know? But if you sit down and you, and you write that symphony like Beethoven, then you mm -hmm. spread love throughout this world, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. funny, there's an example of Monet, I'm sure you like Monet. Monet, I love Monet. Okay? And um, you know the, uh, the painting with the water lilies? Yeah. Okay? Uh, and uh, who, who we've been looking at that painting for years, and yeah. I did. A l I was in, in, the, in the museum not too long ago, and um, I heard the guide talk about it. And it turns out that you know, I, all my life I thought that Monet walked uh, walked into a park, mm -hmm. saw the bridge. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, this is nice. And here's some nice water lilies. Mm -hmm. Okay, Monet constructed that whole scene. That was in his backyard. Uh huh. Really? You know, yeah. he developed. He he brought in his bridge, Japanese style bridge, uh -huh. over this pond. Yeah. You know, mm. planted the trees, you right. know, and all that stuff, uh -huh. you know, and created it. Out of his own mind. Out of his own mind. He Al created Delphi it. did those drawings of St. Mark's oh, Church. Al he Delphi's did it from amazing. his own mind uh, mind's eye. He had right. sat on a bench with his spirit next to him and took a pic and the church oh, is here and he had it from and he up has there. It from up there. How yeah. the hell people it's can amazing. how artists can do that, it's I don't amazing. know. It's Al, amazing. Al, I want to buy great paintings guy. and keep yeah. them for right, forever. Right, yeah. All right. So anyway, uh. that's my point on power. I think mm. I think these guys with power, I mm. feel bad for them. That now you're talking power political power, you're talking about power of creation. I feel bad that these guys running the show. Uh, have let power take over them and well, their instincts, w rather than using their power to uh, do something constructive, they're being destructive. Well, how about that question of uh, power being something used for something like art and so forth? Because you'll notice, if you, if, you, if you observe the world and everything, that the arts are giving very short shrift in terms of the capital formation and so forth, what is done. I mean, here in this country, the arts are if you come home, you say, Daddy, the, your, your daughter comes home and she says, 
I'm going to get married. Who are you marrying? I'm marrying an artist, oh, a real okay. artist. Right. They'll say, oy vey. Right. And they will say, you're going to starve. Mm -hmm. Because nothing goes to the arts. I mean, mm -hmm. that has practically no value. The really right. important creative things have very little value. What has value is something that's going to add value and yes. a thing that can yes. be measured yes. by yes. economic criteria and income and, and everything and living and ability to have control. And this uh, is the, the threshold ability we're on right now. Right. Okay. So we're this talking is the doorstep we're going through. Art okay. Is, yeah. If you want to say to yourself, I am hopeless because that you know the world is being controlled by a bunch of nuts and so is our media and so is our government and so is everything else and they're I all interconnected shell. yeah yeah no mm -hmm. you should be saying to yourself what a great opportunity for me to use all the potential of my abilities now you know now you oh. know to correct this yeah you know and to assert myself my own humanity oh. with this what do I, i'm like a sculpture you can sculpt yourself like michelangelo sculpted david uh -huh. you know you can say man i want to stand i up. couldn't do that i want to be courageous i'm sorry i could not do that i could not do the david if i tried for a million but years you know with a bunch you're of monkeys harold helping Channer. you you're doing harold channel that's you're doing not it the david well. uh, it's your own david okay? you ever try and draw like al you take a lousy you compliment, think you think you could draw it's your own david man yeah. you are doing something through your broadcast here mm. that are touching people in a way they cannot get touched mm. you know through any other kind of media mm. man so man, well, you we, are doing your own sculpture well we're finally getting it back to where now we're closing quotes on 200,000 years of human experience as right. we extend right, our right. consciousness through technology we and we're coming back into a multimedia multi-sensorial resonating relationship to the environment we're coming to the end of the human experience what, what, do by, what do you mean thing? by that? What do you mean well, by that? I'm not sure. I mean, if that's a major thing, but we come to the point where after 200,000 years and we've got all this technology, right. which is an extent, that's power. And what's really changed is the technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? And that's extensions of consciousness in the environment, different than okay. any of the other right. creatures. We've gotten to the point where we're so clever. I bring this up all the time. It's a major thesis. Apparently, they tell us, Michio Kaku and, uh, and uh, other people tell us that if those weapons, and look at what they're doing, they're, they're developing a new grade of uh, tactical nuclear weapons now and that kind of, if those weapons were to be unleashed, it would apparently, by modeling, it has right. to be, be the end of the whole species. Okay. Not the other tribe in the other valley, not that, anything like right. that. It's the like whole... Like all of the whole strange, species. That's a strange love. And that could not happen, that could not happen in as recently as the Second World War. Right. We did, that's an existential new capability that brings a new kind of reality into the zeitgeist. You know, I, I don't care and that, that that is there. And on the other side, that we had a technological capability, a capability. All right, look. Not a, let me finish the point. A capability. I only have two hours. I know. There's a capability of destruction is Promethean in a way that it has never been. You're trying to make some reason. Why is this sometime different than all the rest of time? Right. Okay, so that's the point. Pregnant. We're leaving it there. The other side is we have a technologically augmented capability to provide, answer all of the ancient scourges, take care of everybody, transcend scarcity Thank you. materialistically. Thank you. And I've heard you say And this. it's never, never, never brought up as a reality of course. by the people, and particularly by the progressives. Of course. And they do not have an economic theory that is relevant to a world that is outside of the context that they have. It's don't blame the bankers, don't blame yeah, the, the politicians, bankers, blame on. the progressives. They do not have a challenge that is relevant to challenge the basic assumptions by which the planet is organized. The problems with the intellectuals, in my view, they haven't come up with an alternative. Okay, now this is where we get into our little okay. dispute here, okay? Because okay. I think the progressives are controlled. Okay. As Just is everybody. As is everybody, but well. you, you've you been to the Council on Foreign Relations meetings and you're oh, cool yeah. with them, okay? My I friend was the my friend was the long term director of the Trilateral executive director of the Trilateral Commission, name? Charles Heck. Nice Charles guy. Heck. Yeah, nice guy. Well we're all nice guys. We got that yin and yang happening how And Br Brzezinski was a smart you know? guy and everything. I knew Brzezinski. I mean I bet you I could sit next to next to President Bush and you know have a nice conversation well, nice well conversation, it might be you know, good if we could get to them. It might be good to if you're gonna if we should right, look, okay go ahead look, you got economic yes, I got I'm all for oh, this that. is not this is this is uh, oh. the shadows of power by James oh. Perloff oh I'm sorry I thought okay. it was economic hit and my point is that the media is controlled okay is bought that and paid for bought like paid the for. Congress okay is that uh, these people when they took over the Federal Reserve Bank actually when they created the Federal Reserve Bank 1913 yeah right around there okay that um, what they wanted to do is is spread their influence throughout mm -hmm. the country by controlling the media, mm -hmm. all right? So let me show you just uh, a, a, little little, a, little me a little media quote, okay? A media, a little media quote. This is going to take about two seconds. Well, it's going to take about 40 seconds. Do we have that? 40 seconds, folks, to put okay. it in Okay. Mm. 
So about the New York, what we have operating in America is an establishment media. As erstwhile New York Times editor John Swinton once said, there is no such thing as independent press in America if we accept that of little country towns. The Times itself was bought in 1896 by Alfred Oakes with banking from J.P. Morgan, Rothschild agent August Belmont, and Jacob Schiff of Kuhn Loeb. Schiff, yeah. Schiff. Dorothy Schiff was great. Well, well, okay. It was subsequently passed on to Oakes' in-law, Arthur Hayes Salzberger, who was a Council on Foreign Relations member. I'll say CFR when I mean Council on Foreign Relations. Yeah. Then to Orville E. Dreyfus, CFR, and finally to the present publisher, Arthur Oakes Salzberger, CFR. The Times has a number of CFR members in its stable of reporters, including Herbert L. Matthews, Hasbro, uh, Harrison Salisbury, Lester Mar. Harrison Salisbury. Well, all these guys, all these guys are I've done programs CFR. with Harrison Salisbury. Fine, I'm not, you, uh, look, look oh. I, can, I can read this whole page yes. of Times, Washington Post, Media, I'm um, sorry, uh, Time Magazine, and Newsweek mm -hmm. filled with CFR members. Now, you might be saying, geez, big deal, it's a club. It's like, it's like the American Bar Association, right? Wrong. The CFR is after one thing, and that's world government. Let me show you a quote from James Wait Woodward. a minute. Well, okay. What? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. CF I know a lot of people that are in the CFR. Right. I mean, I've been there lots of times. Look, there's 4,000 members. Not yeah. all those members, you know, are in on this. Yeah. You know, it has an inner core huh. of members, okay? And Paul Warburg was one of them. Well, uh, James Warburg. Let me see what he They're said. almost all okay. smart people. Well, smart could yeah. be used. Smart people make the bombs, too. Harold, come on, come on, you break. That's true. It was James Warburg who would later tell a Senate committee, we shall have world government whether you like it or not, by conquest or consent. The CFR has a goal. Mm -hmm. They want world government. What does that mean, world government? What does well, that mean? it doesn't mean what everybody would, would hope world government would mean. Well, what would it mean? What do you mean when you say that? Because that seems to be a goal no, of fascism. The, the, you call it fascism. Yes. Okay, so spell it out the way you see it. I'm not sure what all I right, understand. All right, I'll, make, I'll spell it out, okay? Mm -hmm. These really, 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 really rich people, yeah, when they very did the few in the world. Very, very few. Yeah, yeah. Okay, when they started taking over the finances of, of countries, the, the, the financing um, of, of uh, printing of money and so on mm -hmm. of countries, like they print the, the, the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, they create it out of thin air, out of nothing, and they lend it to us, and we pay them back with interest, and then all of a sudden our money goes into their pockets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, when you can, when in you America control it's, it's creating, America, it's owned by uh, private banks. It's owned by private banks. Federal Reserve, and, right? right. Who, who owned by people? Okay. Yeah. Now, when you control that printing of money in these countries, okay, um, you basically can start controlling the country. And first off, you have to, you kind of get all this money because you can make it. Number one, you know, and well, wait a minute, it's supposed to be with the Federal Reserve Board and other such agencies. You're supposed if you don't if you don't have some mechanism to make sure that the amount of money of a in the economy is met by what has been produced, you're going to have runaway inflation, so you have to control well, that. Well, we, have you can't just we have an $8 trillion debt. What are you talking about runaway? I know about It's that. ran away. It's ran over the hill, okay? So my point is, when you can control how a nation prints its money, okay, you okay. can control a lot of things in that nation, and you have the, the power and influence to control the, um, the uh, representatives in Congress and so on, and the media, okay? So now, if you control this country and that country and that country, you know, and if you have enough money, what do you want besides money? There is this, this kind of like hunger for something, for power. So you want power and you want control. So what these people are doing are trying to uh, further their influence even, even, even more. They developed the Council on Foreign Relations. Now, let me show you a little about the Council on Foreign Relations, okay? All right. I want to tell you a little bit about a gentleman named Edward Mandel House. Mm -hmm. Ever heard of that no. name? No. Okay, no. well. Edward Mendel Hass, have you heard of uh, G. Edward Griffin? He wrote the grandest, he was a creator, uh, he authored the, the Creature from Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island, I know about, okay. but I haven't read that. Right. I haven't even seen that book. Edward Mendel Hass mm -hmm. was, you can say he's the National Security Advisor for Woodrow Wilson. Mm -hmm. Okay, he basically found Wilson, put him in office. Edward Mendel Hass's father, Thomas, made a fortune in the United States as a lending agent for London banks, which preferred to remain anonymous. It was widely believed that he represented the Rothschild Consortium. Okay, he was the one of the few in the South who emerged from the war between the states with a great fortune. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, House himself was certainly a member of the Round Table. Have you heard of the Round Table? I don't know what. Round okay, table. there was a Round. Uh, Business. You heard of Cecil table? Rhodes? Of course, I read the biography of Cecil Rhodes every year, along with George Orwell's 1984. Right. He was financed by, by Rothschild, oh. and he, and it, one of his wishes was mm. to create when he left his will mm. was to create a round table mm. of, of very very extraordinary gentlemen, so to speak, who would end up running things. And okay? also all these Rhodes scholars. And all these Rhodes, yeah, Rhodes scholars, mm. of course. They mm. got the, they kind of like pe bring the people over to uh, to England and, and um, let's say that smart they educate fellows. them. They're right? very fellows smart. And gals, very all smart. Those Rhodes you know? scholars, yeah. Okay, but so, so they're the trying to get the so best. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. For what reason, though? Okay. It was him, it was Rothschild, it was Lord Milner, and it was Arnold Toynbee. All guys with great reputations. Arnold Toynbee Arnold was Toynbee great. He has a great reputation. I, mm. I kind of felt let down mm. about that mm. he was in this, okay? Mm. But so was Colonel House, okay? Uh, so he was involved in this kind of like mine uh, think tank called mm. the Round Table, mm -hmm. all right? All right. Uh, and now, wh wh what President Wilson said 
House being his advisor, was Mr. House is my second personality. He's my independent self. His thoughts and mine are one. Uh, that's a super ego. Well, I guess. But he yeah. lived. He lived in the White House. Mm. Mm. You know, imagine the national security advisor living in the White House. Okay. Mm. And it, then he didn't have a title back then. Mm. He just lived there. Okay. Now, a fellow named Colonel Alicia Eli Garrison was the author of a book called Roosevelt, Wilson, and the Federal Reserve Law. All right? Mm -hmm. And he also talks about Colonel House. All right? Now, this guy, Gar Colonel Garrison, mm -hmm. was an agent of Brown Brothers Harriman, and he had entries to everywhere in the financial community, so he knew, he knew about these things. He said Colonel House agreed entirely with the early writing of Mr. Warburg. You know who Paul Warburg is? I know the name. And Paul everything. Warburg yeah, basically was a guy who worked at Cuban Globe it. over, uh, 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 he worked for Jacob Schiff, mm -hmm. and he developed the concept of the Federal Reserve Bank. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he was the Federal Reserve's first, first chief, let's say, okay? And um, anyways, uh, this fellow, Eli Garrison, said, Paul Warburg is the man who got the Federal Reserve Act together after the Aldrich plan aroused such nationwide resentment and opposition. The mastermind of both plans was Baron Alfred Rothschild of London. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're here, we're, we're connecting President Wilson, Colonel House, uh, and, the, and the beginning of the Federal Reserve Bank. Mm -hmm. And, and these, all these financiers from London, one mm -hmm. of the page. Colonel House is also one of the founders of the Council on Foreign Relations. Okay. Okay, and this is a, a page from... Uh, some information straight from the Council on Foreign Relations uh, website, CFR.org, okay? And how Colonel House uh, was in something called the, in in the Inquiry, okay? Now, what he did, what did I write it down? Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, for, don't, don't forget that Wilger Wilson had the plan for the League of Nations. Mm -hmm. That was Colonel House's idea. Mm -hmm. What's the League of Nations? Well, it's these people, it, it sounds innocent enough, mm -hmm. right? Although the Americans didn't want that kind of an internationalism. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to be, you know. There was an isolationist trend, they yeah. Were kind of isolationists, Strong, okay? Yeah. But mm -hmm. with the League of Nations, basically what they wanted to do is start a world government, mm -hmm. okay? Now, so what about that? What, the, the UN, uh, International Declaration of Human Rights? Well, uh, let's talk about the UN. Of course, yeah. the UN, uh, the mm -hmm. property for the UN was given to uh, the UN by who? By the Rockefellers. By the Rockefellers. Use the hog cu cutting okay. places or something. Now, well, the Rockefellers were in the CFR. Well, yeah, but you keep saying well, the, what you're talking. They're leaders of geopolitical thinking. They get together and form one another in their meetings and re advance right, that. Right, but what I'm they're, talking they're about, they're, Harold, they're, they're is origin. A learning journal. It's origin. Uh huh. Okay, CFR right. is not a democratic democratic institution, by the way. Well, it's run from the top down. They they select people. You can't get you can't get voted into the they CFR. Select, they select they people. They select bright people. Like they select, like they select uh, influential people that they can control. Okay. Now, uh, Council well, on Foreign Relations was started by Edward Mandel House, the same guy who started the Federal Reserve Bank, the same guy who was influenced in the roundtable with Rothschild and Toynbee. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what he did uh, was during the Paris uh, talks of 1919, mm -hmm. uh, he got involved with all these people in England, and they decided to form two think tanks. In England, it's the Royal Institute of International Affairs, mm -hmm. and in America, it's the Council on Foreign Relations. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, then, since then, what they've been doing is, like you said, selecting these people for power, for influence, and for brains. And, and, gear, and gearing their message toward the world government. There and are people interested in how are we going to operate. It's called public service. It's called understanding the world, understanding how can we make the world work better, how we're doing it. There are people that are involved in public affairs. Oh, gosh. I including All our right. political class and so forth. You and they the have an organization sir, where they get together. You had the big Brzezinski here, didn't you? Yes, a long, a long time, ago. time ago. Okay. He was a, he was a scholar. The Tektronic Age. And Brzezinski was, I think, the national security advisor to uh, Carter. Yes. Am I correct? Correct. Am I right? And this is what he said <laughs> before he was voted as National Security Advisor to Carter. And this, and he was uh, also a CFR man. He said, um, he was a globalist. He declared that national sovereignty is no longer a viable concept. Well, perhaps. Perhaps. I think the nation state can get an awful lot of mischief has been done in the name of religion, also in the name of the nation state. Fine, but we are globalizing right. and we are, one, we are all one and system. And what's globalizing and producing? It's producing polarization, Harold. You got a bunch, as globalizing continues, you have all the manufacturing going out of this country, going to other countries, where people are making two cents an hour to build stuff that people used to build here for union wages, mm -hmm. right? So all the money is going to the very, 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 very small few, and you know this, Harold. Everywhere. The top 100 to 1 percent is getting richer and richer and richer and richer, and everybody else is getting Thank poorer. Thank you. Uh, okay? Top 100 to 1 percent, that's where all the, the growth went in the American economy. The are the guys who are going to be controlling the world that's government. The, that's where Harold, these are the guys who are going to be controlling the world government. And these are the guys who profit off things like war, Harold. So I don't want my government in their hands. I want to have a say in it. Uh -huh. I want to have the, demo the democratic pr uh, principles that we used to have with our Constitution before we kind of like uh, let uh, King Bush um, basically nullify a lot of the Constitution. It so no, so no, I am not for world government when it's, when it's run by a bunch of fascists. Uh -huh. If you want to have world government, uh, uh, individual nations who are, who are doing well as nations, yeah. you know what I mean? 
who have equality and freedom for their people and liberty and feed their people, mm. and you want to have individual nations in a group that confer with each other and have a, a kind of a consensus about important things, mm. I'm for that. But they say that there's a bunch of rich people who, just because they control the media and the defense industry, you know, and, and they the, control and politicians, the, and, that they could run the world? And no, Harold, and I will die before I let that happen. And the finance. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so no, world government is not viable. By the way, b before Wait a minute, you're jumping very quickly. I mean, a world government is not viable. World so government is not viable in those conditions, mm -hmm. in those circumstances. Hey, not, not to jump right, over, the but... the system in place is not adequate to what the zeitgeist either allows in a new liberating way for the masses and democratic a liberating way or requires if we're to survive and prosper in the universe. Of course, and it's a lousy idea. So we need an alternative uh, yeah, system. Yeah, I don't mind a cooperation. What gives us the understanding that would make possible an alternative rather than just pointing fingers at the guys who are doing what every guys, uh, every power group has done throughout all of history is to try and well, get more and more power for themselves. And they're trying, they're trying to find ago, those Harold. solutions. The, uh, the, a lot of those right. meetings, the universe. Well, uh, it's uh, for people who could think clearly and they have the trilateral to face commission. these people and say, "You're doing the wrong thing, and I want to do the right thing." Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to provide oh, an alternative? Good, Set up another alternative think tank. Put it on public access. Well, we're here Put talking about these possibilities. I told you okay. at the beginning, the answers are not going to come out of those well-established institutions right. by and large. First off, we they're not going to come. Do you realize there's a time factor here? Places like you. Do you realize there's a time factor? Uh, in terms of this program, no, or, or the, the, the humanity. What's going to happen? Humanity. When we can blow up all of humanity, not only there that, is. I mean, uh, they're not going to blow up themselves. That, but here's not the a point: matter. Do you know the national ID card is has been acted by Congress? Mm -hmm. It's already in place. Mm -hmm. Okay, the real idea, the real ID act. Okay, mm -hmm. which means everybody in our country is by May of 2008 going to have to get a national ID card, probably through the Motor Vehicle Agency, right? May of 2008. Yes, yes. See how that's one year the away. The media does not. Does, yeah, does not. Focus on this. It's this is very, very important. Months. That's only 15 yes, of months course. away. Now we're talking about National no. ID card of May 2008. It's going to have an RFID chip in it. Doesn't you know what an RFID chip is? Mm. It's a computer chip that mm. they can they could see uh, where you are. Let's see, but they don't know where you are and who you're with every moment of your life. Why don't they just uh, implant that in every human being? Well, that's that a plan for be their better future, than the driving license. You know? Okay, you could put it right on the forehead, right, or in the back of the hand. Uh, the back of the hand, yeah, like yeah. biblical says. Yeah, you wouldn't like, like, like that. The, I guess. Yeah, the, beast the point thing. is uh -huh. that by May of 2008, we're all supposed to get these national ID cards. Supposed to be have to by law, we get arrested, right? Uh -huh. If you don't have a national ID card, you can't open a bank account, you can't drive a car, you can't fly a plane, you can't buy property, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have now to. Now, why have are it. they doing that? What What is the rationale for doing that? Because the people in control of our government are these international bankers who want control of the world, mm -hmm. Harold, and they want to make everybody their slave. I wish I could put it better. Wow. They want you and me to have an ID card so we don't, so they can isolate us in case we get out of line. Mm -hmm. So God forbid, in, in uh, June of 2008 or 2009, let's uh -huh. say, uh -huh. there's a big resistance movement going because if something is unfair, you know, mm -hmm. and they abuse their laws about the national ID card, and they say, well, you know what, you guys? Because you resist in America, we're going to label you as terrorists, and that means we're either going to cart you off to a detention center. We don't need that habeas corpus. We, we don't, don't need, need no habeas, habeas corpus. corpus. You can't, yeah, yeah. They'll throw away <laughs> no, the no key. No you don't have the right to a lawyer. Corpus, yeah. And besides that, uh, what, the, what they'll do, even, even on a low level, what they'll do is that you can't leave New York City. Mm -hmm. You can't fly a plane because we think that you're a, a, a troublemaker. And they'll mm -hmm. do this shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It slipped out. It slipped they'll out. do it's these right. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. my, my point is that uh, it's if, coming if this through goes a crescendo of absurdity. Yeah, right. If you, you want change, uh -huh. but you want positive change, don't you? Absolutely. I want positive mm -hmm. change. Okay. Uh -huh. To get this positive change, we have to kind of like go against the rulings of the ruling class. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and corral the um, the will of the people toward us, and we will not be able to Didn't do I that. Didn't I say earlier? I thought that the the co the context is becoming where that is something that's more possible now than ever in the history of uh, events. When you have a powerful p a bunch of people who will control your almost your every move, if, uh -huh. if you have a national ID card, in you, yeah, you but know? no, I'm saying there's hope in the fact that the people are beginning to stir. The people. Ow. Now it's unfortunate. The Ow. people. Listen to the, me for a minute. So you got this group of people and everything. And first of all, I think in my kind of thing, you're going to have to have a system that's not going to be able to be liberating of the people that's a, that's that's something but mean, we you need you to, you well i mean like imagine that. that there are stirrings among the people now it, that there are stirrings among the people such are happening all over the world the united states uh, the world's opinion and right. it's stirring the masses of the people okay. the masses of the people it's have been led around like sheep people. yes yes all right Bingo. but they're beginning to stir they're beginning to wake up and that without being provided with a real challenging alternative philosophy or ideology to the system, imagine what's going to happen when there is a real effective challenge to the realities of the system that these people are trying to protect 
feeling like they're being locked uh, back into a corner because the system that they're in charge of and understand is outdated and we have but it's the uh, we have not provided an alternative the intellectuals have not provided an alternative to that you can't just say you guys are all responsible for all this sort of thing and then ha well, the one thing they're well, really nervous about is anarchy i hate to be the bearer of bad tidings okay right but the intellectuals are controlled as well by these same groups. You're an intellectual. You're not control. Who controls you? Well, Columbia University. How many? What? Well, no. How, who controls you? What you're saying? Well, thank you for saying I'm an intellectual. Yeah. Okay. Of the intellectual but class. How does this sound? A whole bunch of the intellectuals who have power in the media and who have power in organizations, they, they, their writings get published in the. That's so why it's not going to come out of those circles. Right. That's what I'm trying to suggest. Right. And you I'm, should get I'm yourself a program you, here to, to, to and come up with something alternative oh, I to what love. is done. I, I, what is the alternative? Right to now? the way the world operates. Oh, yeah. all right. well, and I'm what are the major I'm problems? My 9/11 mm -hmm. truth alternative. I mean, we're, we're, what we're doing is just saying bad, 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 bad. Oh, terrible, 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 terrible. And we don't have an alternative. I mean, is all it right. Marxism? On a personal. Is Marxism something that wouldn't do it? If we're going to socialize everything, no, should we nationalize no. everything? We don't What's have the to alternative? do a whole. We don't have to have a whole. We don't have to have a whole lot of good ideas to have an idea that's better. Than no, but at happened. some level, you do. Okay, I mean, that's right. So, so right now, what I'm not, look. Everybody can say it's terrible, 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 terrible. All of this, this is bad, and they're all okay. interrelated. Well, let's let's talk about who, a little idea. Who, right? Who yes, yes or where? Starters, pull the guys who out of Iraq. Where? Who and Aaron, where? Okay, okay. Just for starters, pull the guys out of okay. Iraq. Uh -huh. Just for starters, abolish the Federal Reserve Bank. Mm -hmm. You know, abolish the Federal. Abolish Federal it. Make, I don't mm -hmm. care about having a central bank. I don't want it in private hands. You mm -hmm. know, have some real oversight. Okay, do, do those two things, and then we'll have another show and talk about uh, you know uh, part C. Well, okay, okay you talk, there's yeah. easy stuff to yeah. do. Okay, you know, abolish well. the, the military commissions act, the, 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 the act that is stripping citizens of habeas corpus. Abolish mm. it. Mm. Okay, abolish the Patriot Act. You know, that says the FBI can go into our homes anytime that they want without, without letting us know. Abolish it. Mm. Abolish the national ID card. I hate being mm. emotional now. Mm. Abolish the national ID card. Now, mm. these are things we could do right away. Uh -huh. That would be a good start and stepping stone. Okay. Okay. And, uh, okay. It, uh, abolish it. So it's all negative, 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 negative. Is there an alternative that is needed? Well, no, right, at that right, level, right, you, right, say, look, look, you say, look. no, wait a minute, at the level, where is the alternative analogy? They have, if you read the journal, I mean, the, you know, the Foreign, foreign Affairs, affairs that kind, all that affairs. kind of, you read that, they've got some of the best minds. They've What's got the best huge minds, grants that are given to people with huge study, people Oliver who Sachs, walk the walk that all these people walk. who can do that. They, they're in these think tanks. they got huge finance. they got all kinds right. of right. Finance and, and they get the best minds. An oxymoron. They're trying to get the best minds in order to answer the questions about how are we going to operate spaceship Nonsense. Earth. They're trying to get influential minds to tell people to tell them what they, what they Responsibly. think. Responsibly. They're trying and to get influential minds to, 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 to convey their point of view. Well, they've got a point of view, but they want to have it responsible. And they don't want to have just anarchy. Remember the big Brzezinski? Great mind. Saying yes. national sovereignty is no longer a concept. They need world government. Okay? Well, yeah, but you're, is that you how intellectual? You don't seem to understand that? what I'm saying. I'm an intellectual. Saying. I disagree with that. But they are trying to come up, and there is some political thing. You've got, you know, some things that come up with an alternative. And be real, real okay. politique. Right, right. Be may, realistic. May and how are we going to provide an alternative to the way things are done? You've got a system that's been in place a long time where all the power gets concentrated in one place. They've got a system. It is. They and, got and a, the wealth. They've got ideas of economic theory. They've got ideas of private property. They've got ideas of what institutions matter. They've right. got idea of how things are going to be right. How right. income is going to be right. distributed? They're giving they got an ideas. agenda. Harold, now, come you, on. If you have, they're, where is there an agenda to follow? Well, no, they have that, but they have all of. They have a thing, a system in place, mm -hmm. and it does. The electricity goes on. It works. Things work. The bus comes. Yeah, the and, and, and six hundred fifty thousand people die in Iraq. Well, you know, yeah, the light, light goes on. Big deal. You well, know, uh, I mean, their their policies are leading to a lot of garbage too. Yeah, but we're not talking about May the I details. To your, to your, what do you do? Talking <laughs> about who has an alternative? Mm -hmm. Does the progressive move? Does Noam Chomsky have a oh, concern? No, Chomsky does. Does, uh, do, does the Noam progressive Chomsky, community? We march in the streets. Neither of those two acknowledge 9/11. That question. That is true. They do all. not. They do so, not. I mean, they're, they're because they think the questions are so obvious. They don't want to be tarred with the anarchist uh, uh, crazies thing, where the people are always complaining and so on. They well, don't have, a, have an alternative. Some we thought we had an alternative with what Mr. Marx saw, the way Mr. Marx saw the way things should be organized. Karl oh, Marx. Guess what? And his partner. And then there was you know, Groucho Marx. Talks about his, his partner Engels, <coughs> who was a rich man. <coughs> but they got, they had a socialist critique. 
They mm -hmm. had a thing built up with the common tour, they were, you know, in the Soviet Union. They had a thing in China. China's now. They do. They have an Did you know the is bank there of Jacob a, Schiff financed the Soviet Union, financed Trotsky? Did you know that? Well, I, I didn't know that. Dollars? I did not happen you to know that. You guys see the Money Masters, all yeah. right? There's themoneymasters.com. I don't know if we have time for the clips I have I have in there. Oh, I'm sorry. By all means, I'm sorry. Do we're we have, talking well, too well, much. Well, yeah, how much time do we have left? Because yeah, we got 49. We've only got one tape, one clip you oh, can I don't know if it's important. I'm going to tell them, okay? Yeah. Guys, both clips were from the, I don't know where camera I'm at. Both clips are from the Money Master. The mm. Money Masters is a, is a tremendous documentary. Okay, it tells yeah. you about the Federal Reserve Bank and tells you about the people that fi founded the, uh, yeah, founded the Federal Reserve Bank mm. and what their plans were. And they also funded communism, uh -huh. you know, and they f and funded Hitler. I mean, Anthony Sutton's got a great book, Wall Street and the Rise of Hitler. Right. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And they wanted to do this because there's an old Hegelian uh, thing called pro a problem, uh -huh. re uh, reaction, solution. Okay. Thesis, they wanted, antithesis, synthesis. Right. They wanted yeah. to create the problems, like mm -hmm. the wars, you know, mm -hmm. to have people say, okay, the wars are so terrible, now we need a world government. Okay, and you got a clip about five minutes. Do they know? It yeah. would be the first one. We can run in five minutes. We can <sighs> just get it in. Who's the first one? Yeah, I don't know if I want to run. But if you want, okay. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Five minutes? Do it. It's, it's five run minutes it. and 50, it's five minutes and 50 seconds. We got five that? minutes and 50 seconds. We just fit it in. And, and then a we'll clip say goodbye. That gets to this, uh, this idea of the finest. So if you could set that up, the first clip, and run that now, then and please. And investigate 9-11, people, Fody. while you have a chance, and fight that national ID <coughs> There are still some problems remaining for those who have any question in, in terms of the way the spaceship Earth is going to be run. Could you please run the tape now, then, please, George? Thank you, the if you could. The problem is that since 1864, we've had a debt-based okay. banking system. All our money is based on oh, government yeah, debt. Are we on? We cannot Don't extinguish you. government debt without extinguishing our money supply. That's why talk of paying off the national debt without reforming our banking system is an impossibility. That's why the solution does not lie in discussing the size of the national debt, rather it lies in reforming our banking system. This is the Federal Reserve headquarters in Washington. It sits on this very impressive address, right on Constitution Avenue, right across from the Lincoln Memorial. But is it federal? Is it really part of the United States government? Well, what we're about to show you is that there's nothing federal about the Federal Reserve, and there are no reserves. The name is a deception created back before the Federal Reserve Act was passed in 1913 to make Americans think that America's central bank operates in the public interest. The truth is that the Federal Reserve is a private bank owned by private stockholders and run purely for their private profit. That's exactly correct. The uh, Fed is a privately owned for-profit corporation, which uh, again has no reserves, at least no reserves available to back up the Federal Reserve notes, which is our common currency. Oh, absolutely. The Federal Reserve is neither federal and has doubtful reserves. It's a private bank that is owned by member banks. And uh, it was chartered uh, under the guise of deceit by an act of Congress in 1913. If there's still any doubt whether the Federal Reserve is a part of the U.S. government, check your local telephone book. In most cities, it is not listed in the blue government pages. It is listed in the business white pages right next to Federal Express, another private company. But more directly, U.S. courts have ruled time and time again that the Fed is a private corporation. Why can't Congress do something about the Fed? Most members of Congress just don't understand the system, and the few who do are afraid to speak up. For example, initially, a veteran congressman from Chicago asked us if he could be interviewed for this video. However, both times our camera crew arrived at his office to do the interview, this was all we were able to film. The congressman never appeared and eventually decided he no longer wanted to participate. But a few others in Congress have been bolder over the years. Here are three quick examples. In 1923, Representative Charles A. Lindbergh, a Republican from Minnesota, and father of the famed aviator Lucky Lindy, put it this way, the financial system has been turned over to the Federal Reserve Board. That board administers the finance system by authority of a purely profiteering group. The system is private, conducted for the sole purpose of obtaining the greatest possible profits from the use of other people's money. 
One of the most outspoken critics in Congress of the Fed was the former chairman of the House Banking and Currency Committee during the Great Depression years. Lewis T. McFadden, Republican of Pennsylvania, said in 1932, we have in this country one of the most corrupt institutions the world has ever known. I refer to the Federal Reserve Board. This evil institution has impoverished the people of the United States and has practically bankrupted our government. It has done this through the corrupt practices of the moneyed vultures who control it. All Senator right, Barry all right. That's, that's, not, that's not good. Bad. Good going. I saw that. Joe Friendly ran the whole Joe thing. Friendly I ran the whole thing. That. He's that's a good a man, Joe Friendly. Yeah, Joe Friendly is great. He's my dear friend. He precedes this program. Yeah. But that's really good. And it's good you brought that up. And there's a DVD and everything. Yeah. yeah see the money masters. One thing mm -hmm. I want. I had another clip I was going to put on. Yeah. Because you know you, you well, say got to about yourself, a minute left. Yeah. Say, you, people say, okay, well, money's based on nothing. Let's make it based on gold. Well, that's not a good idea because when Roosevelt was in office. He got all the people in the country. Money to, should. Mo I have to tell you, this, the old people in the country to turn in their gold and pay them, you know, twenty dollars an ounce. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the gold went to the went to the Fort Knox, mm -hmm. and the gold was missing from the Fort Knox, and now it's all being held in the Federal Reserve as collateral on our on our um, income tax. However, is so done. we can't return to the gold because we don't have the gold anymore. We can't right, return the to the gold standards. We, we don't have the gold but anymore. The, uh, however, the money supply is issued. It should be backed up by the actual production in the economy, or you're going to have inflation. That's one of the charges well, of that system. Mm -hmm. You can't have runaway. You could just turn out money and then they didn't get right. any value. Towards so it's got to be backed video, up with um, actual production of value. What they have is suggestions by Milton Friedman, who was a mm. tremendous economist, Monitors, of, of yeah. how to have... He's probably in the saddle now. Yeah, yeah he's, he's passed away, but how to have a, uh, but his theory, a central yeah. bank... Monitors. Oh, yeah. How to have a central bank without having it in private hands, mm -hmm. and how we can get out, we can pay off our debt, you know, um, by printing our own money, but doing it wisely. Well, okay. yeah, and have it backed up. Yeah, that, that's a big issue and so forth. And then uh, to have a view of the overall macro economy and the macro economy within a macro view of the planet is something that we need, a real vision. Mm -hmm. We don't have a vision adequate, whether our political parties and so forth, that is adequate to what's required. And when we get one... I agree. When I we agree. get one, when we get one, that impetus within the uh, society in general, the masses of the people, which is stirring now without a vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're g repairing to socialism and uh, uh, things like that. And when they have a vision that's really adequate, that's going to really be something that's going to uh, uh, trigger a, 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 ma a major liberating well, movement. You know and that vision has to be the tricky thing. It's not just that it's going to serve the people in some sort of a way by cutting down on the interests of those who are running things, the vultures or whatever you want to call them. You're going to have to have a vision that's so comprehensively appropriate that it's liberating of the masses and the creatures and the ecology, but is also able to be inclusive of those responsible for these outdated historical institutions right. without yeah. anybody's head being cut off. Exactly. And not one exactly. hair should exactly. be touched on the people of the people who are running things. It's a consciousness raising thing. Well, I'm not into, I'm not into you know, I'm not a guillotine bearing guy, okay? okay. I mm -hmm. just think, you know, uh, I'm Gandhi, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. peace. Love. You better run the, uh, the credits, yeah. Okay, but I think that uh, as far as a vision goes, it is up to people. I, I would I would challenge people to think about what kind of world they want to live We should be in. working it out. We should be working it on places which aren't influenced by all these money interests that have an influence. Be, and I, my humble opinion is it's going to come within the media. Mm -hmm. It's going to come within your communications realm. It's going to be coming within the realm of int public access television to the people and intellectuals that are not dependent upon lines of money and so forth from buying influence from people. Well, it's going to come from there first, and that's where the ideas again. are going to emerge. And uh, they're a part of it is here Abolish on this little, the Federal little Reserve with you. Pull the guys out of Iraq, mm -hmm. stop the national ID card, easy first steps. Mm -hmm. You know, and Those then, are and then we'll specifics take. within the old order. What I'm talking about is an overarching understanding or vision mm -hmm. of why is there something that makes this different than any other time coming out of history. That vision is going to be provided, and when it does, it'll really take off.